But she is dead. <laughs> no, it's a regular person. Yeah, just write a check. Yeah, <laughs> $11,000. She was 26 anyway. She had limited value. Oh my god, I am truly shocked by this conversation. On the night of January 23rd, 2022, a routine police response in Seattle turned into a shocking sequence of events that no one could have anticipated. Suddenly, the center reported that a young man was in shock from overdosing on illegal substances. Police assistance is urgently needed. Immediately after receiving this urgent assignment, police turned on their sirens and accelerated to the reported location. Although it is an emergency and the officer is driving quite fast, he is not using the siren. Instead, he only occasionally uses the horn to alert other vehicle. Just a few seconds after running a red light, the officer was driving at 74 miles per hour, while the speed limit for this road is 25 miles per hour. Let's review the officer's camera footage. Just as the police car was about to pass the crosswalk, a girl suddenly appeared running across the road. Because the officer was driving too fast at 74 miles per hour, couldn't avoid her and crashed directly into her. The right windshield of the police car was shattered and the front end of the car was severely damaged. Three Mary two, start a supervisor, start fire for a struck pedestrian. Negative, I'm gonna be on Aurora. After the collision with the pedestrian, the officer immediately got out of the vehicle, to provide first aid. Following that, the ambulance and additional supporting officers arrived at the scene to assist. Medical personnel at the scene tried to save the girl who was hit by the car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At 30, pause. 4:25:26:27:8:29:30. However, she ultimately did not survive due to her severe injuries. The victim is Janavi Kandula, a 23-year-old woman. Kandula, an Indian American student, was pursuing a master's program at Northeastern University. That night, she was crossing the street in the South Lake Union area when she was struck by a police car. The officer responsible for the accident is Kevin Dave. And here is Officer Dave's state of mind after causing the accident. Mary one, you're right? the overdose, you're going to no. 708. Okay. I'm not all right. Now front is Alex. Let's listen to Officer Dave recount what happened to his colleague. She was in the crosswalk, she saw me, she started running through the crosswalk. Slammed on my brakes. Instead of staying back where she should, before crossing, she sits. As he described what happened, his colleague comforted him. Let's analyze the situation to see if it matches Officer Dave's account. It can be seen that Kandula was crossing the street. She was wearing a coat with a hood, which may have obstructed her vision. As for Officer Dave, he was driving at a high speed of up to 74 miles per hour, while the speed limit on this road is 25 miles per hour. Officer Dave did not have the police car's siren on to warn others, only occasionally using the horn. Later, 
The police inspected the accident scene and found that Dave's car was traveling at 63 miles per hour at the time of the collision. This caused the student Kondula to be thrown approximately 138 feet away. Despite efforts to save her, the unfortunate girl did not survive. According to U.S. police regulations, after a serious traffic accident, the Internal Affairs Division of the police will immediately step in to test the sobriety of the involved officers in order to rule out any suspicion of driving under the influence or impaired driving. The person in charge of testing Officer Dave was Officer Daniel Otterer from the DUI squad. Daniel is not only an expert in substance testing, but also the vice president of the Seattle Police Association. Upon testing, Daniel found that Officer Dave was driving in a completely sober state, not under the influence of alcohol or drugs. A few weeks later, internal police investigators frequently reviewed body cam footage in preparation for internal review and analysis. During this process, they accidentally discovered a potentially problematic audio recording captured by Officer Daniel's body cam. Shortly after his session with Officer Dave, Officer Daniel's body cam recorded his inappropriate behavior during a conversation with Officer Mike Solon, president of the Seattle Police Officers Guild. Oh my God, I am truly shocked by this conversation. Oh, he's good. He says, well, normally we don't give voluntary statements. And I said, hey, you're going to have to decide if you wanted to give a statement or not. But it does not seem like there's a criminal investigation going on. He's going 50. That's not out of control. That's not reckless for a train driver. It is clear that Officer Daniel intentionally covered up and misrepresented the investigation results. In reality, Officer Dave was driving at speeds up to 74 miles per hour before hitting the unfortunate girl. Uh, there's a witness that says, no, she wasn't. But that witness could be different because I don't think she was thrown 40 feet either. Uh, I think she went up on the hood, hit the windshield, then when he hit the brakes, flew off the car. According to the investigation results, the girl was thrown 138 feet by Officer Dave's impact. Officer Daniel lied, claiming that she was only thrown 40 feet. But she is dead. <laughs> no, it's a regular person. Yeah, just write a check. <laughs> $11,000. She was... 26 anyway, she had limited value. Oh my God, I am truly shocked by this conversation. After the footage was revealed, Officer Daniel's words shocked everyone regarding ethical issues. He said that the authorities should write a $11,000 check to the family of the deceased girl to settle everything. Officer Daniel jokingly dismissed John Avi Kondula's death and claimed her life wasn't worth much further fueling the outrage. Later, Officer Daniel suddenly realized that he had forgotten to turn off his body camera and quickly turned it off. However, all body cam videos of U.S. police cannot be deleted and are stored in the U.S. Police Data Center. In August 2023, investigators from the Police Internal Affairs Department discovered the recorded conversation of Officer Daniel during a routine review of body cam audio and video footage. Immediately, they launched an investigation into Officer Daniel. Many people couldn't believe that Daniel could be so cold and inhumane. People began protesting to seek justice for the unfortunate girl who passed away. Those who knew Kandula said she was a very kind person. She had a loving family in India. Her mother is an elementary school teacher in India. To support her studies in the U.S., her mother had to take on a significant amount of debt. Kandula worked very hard to get a stable job and help her mother repay the debt. Unfortunately, tragedy struck this poor girl. The entire family saw America as a place where dreams come true. These disgraceful U.S. police officers need to be held accountable for their unethical and racist remarks and actions. Even the employees within the police department cannot accept Daniel's words. How would the victim's family feel losing their daughter and hearing Officer Daniel's conversation the police talked about their deceased loved one as if she were trash. How on earth can they laugh about someone being hit by a car and dying? If it were their own family member, would they still be able to laugh like that? Outraged citizens demanded criminal charges against Officer Dave. However, after a thorough investigation, the prosecutor decided not to charge Officer Dave with reckless driving or any other crimes. Instead, he was fined $5,000 for second-degree negligent driving. According to the latest information, 
Officer Dave has not yet paid the fine, even though the deadline has passed. Meanwhile, Officer Daniel's hearing has been delayed multiple times, and the police department has yet to take any disciplinary action against him. The footage from Officer Daniel's camera that was made public has sparked much debate. Some people argue that even though Officer Dave was on duty, driving at 74 miles per hour in a 25 miles per hour zone without continuously using the siren is dangerous driving. Others believe that in this accident, Kandula was partly at fault for running across the road without proper caution, increasing the risk of an accident. As for Officer Daniel, his disregard for human life is alarming. These conversations might have been jokes between two close police friends, and it doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't care about human life. However, it is clear that he is not suitable for the role of ensuring public safety. I want to remind you that no one can protect you better than yourself. What are your thoughts on this event? Leave a comment and let me know. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Catch my future videos. I'm Mr. Simple Police, and I'll see you in the next video.